Hello, Longboarding Mom. Today I am going to make homemade pizza. I have a really simple, easy homemade pizza crust. It came with my kitchen aid. This was actually the first book that came with the very first kitchen aid that I got. Um, so that's why it looks so well used. I only use the pizza crust recipe. It says crusty pizza dough. It's really good, really simple. And the pizzas that I make, one for my son is pepperoni and olive, and sometimes I put on pineapple. Yes, we are a pineapple family. We like pineapple on our pizza. It goes good with pepperoni, chicken, bacon, all kinds of stuff. Onions, mushrooms. Why wouldn't you put it on your pizza? The pepperoni and um, pineapple is a spicy Hawaiian. Yum. So he likes that. And I like a barbecue chicken pizza. It's the, I've got my homemade barbecue sauce I made the other day. So I'm going to use that as the base instead of pizza sauce. It's so good with chicken and onions and bacon. And if I have pineapple, I'm not quite sure if I do or not. I'm going to put pineapple on it. It's so good. It's like a, you know, when you make shish kebabs and you, you put the pineapple, mushrooms, onions, and all that stuff on a stick and you barbecue it with some barbecue sauce. That's what it tastes like on a pizza. I mean, pizzas, you can almost do anything with. It's like a hot sandwich, but flat. So that's, that's kind of what I think, you know, pizza is. That's why I can eat it cold. I might eat it cold the next morning too for breakfast. Who likes pizza for breakfast? I do. But, so I got this recipe, I made it up kind of myself, um, but we used to get pizzas from Papa Murphy's. It's a take and bake pizza. Um, I don't know if you guys have it in your area, it's Oregon, Washington, and actually I kind of know the owner, it's my cousin's wife's parents. <laughs> they uh, started the franchise and um, they actually sold it and have retired from it, so I'm not sure quite who owns Papa Murphy's now, but anyway, it's a take and bake. And so what they do is they make the pizza for you and you take it home and bake it. So if you're on food stamps or something, you can um, buy that pizza and afford it. It's not expensive like the um, sit down restaurants like Pizza Hut and Domino's and stuff like that and the um, deliveries and stuff. They're really good pizza. So they used to make a barbecue chicken pizza every summer and they quit making it. So I started making it myself at home because that's what I like to do is try to copy things and make them myself. So I'm going to show you my easy crusty pizza dough. I'm going to flip the camera down so you guys can see what I'm going to do. This recipe I have been using for at least 20 years. It's really simple. I don't follow the recipes, like I told you sometimes, so um, I just kind of, this one, you're supposed to warm the mixer, which I did with hot water, and you're supposed to dissolve the yeast in the bowl, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to add the two cups of flour. You don't need that one. You need... the hook attachment. So two cups of flour, we are going to put in a half a teaspoon of salt. And total flour is gonna be two and a half cups to um, three and a half cups flour. So one teaspoon of salt, we are going to add to that two teaspoons of olive oil. Sometimes I forget the olive oil and I have to add it at the end. I'm going to add the yeast, which is two and a quarter teaspoons for my big container of yeast. One two and a 
quarters. I'm going to get this right back in the refrigerator. So give me just a second. I'll be right back. I'm going to give that a good mix before I add my hot water. And while it is mixing on too, we are going to add the hot water to the mixing bowl. It's not hot water, it is warm water. And then get that flour mixed in with that water. And, whoops, I should turn it down. Turn it off so I can get the flour. On two, on two, and I'm gonna turn it on for, um, one minute. Start my kitchen timer. One minute at speed two. And in the meantime, I'm gonna get I've got my half a cup of half cup measuring cup out, so I'm gonna get a half cup ready to go. to turn it off before you my timer is getting ready to go off and then you're gonna add turn the timer on for another two minutes and in the meantime you're gonna keep adding flour to the mixing bowl half cup at a time let's set the timer for two minutes Add some flour to it and when it starts coming away from the bowl starts pulling away from the bowl you just want to add a little bit of flour at a time so right now it's like two and a quarter cups of flour it's pulling away from the bowl already just a little bit of sugar. I like my pizza dough a little bit sweet, so I add probably about a tablespoon. Usually I just throw it in my, my hand, but I'll add a tablespoon. I should have added that at the beginning. I tell you, sometimes I forget things, that's okay. Gonna add a little bit more flour to it because it's sticking at the bottom. I got 21 seconds left, but it says to need for another two minutes. I usually need it for like five minutes or longer, and I still add flour to it so it doesn't um, stick to the bottom. It gets all springy, and then you're going to. Put it in your bowl you can put it in the refrigerator while you're preparing all the other stuff or you can proof it right away and you proof it for about one hour and you usually you put it in a bowl of oil a little bit of oil you kind of spin it around like I showed you the last pizza dough or the last dough I made I'll show you guys again little oil and then you proof it for a couple, for an hour but you can put this dough up in the refrigerator for a couple days before you prepare it. what it looks like. 
looks like right now. See, and it's pulling away because it's still stuck on the bottom down there, so it needs more flour. Now I'm adding a little bit more at a time. I put it on for two minutes. I'm going to put it on for another two minutes. And that's basically kneading it for me. So I don't have to pull it out and knead it for five to eight minutes. like before it is proofed. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator while I make the other stuff. I'll see you guys back here in a little bit. Man, I started grating the cheese. I thought I was recording and I wasn't. So this is what I got grated while it was still cold. It's been in the freezer for about a couple hours. I wanted to show you something first. This is my cutting board, but underneath it, I put a pot holder so it doesn't slide around and move around. So this is what I was talking about. It's still cold, so it's grating pretty easy, but it's starting to get squishy on me. That's why I kind of left it in the package there. Just be careful not to grate the plastic. So I... I'm going to put in the smoky cheese that my husband made, the smoked cheddar and mozzarella. I had, um, when my husband started making the smoked cheese, we smoked it, everything, and put it on everything, and I thought my son was going to get tired of it. He actually really liked it. I asked him, I was like, are you getting tired of smoked cheese? And he's like, well, no, I like it. So we put it on everything until summer when we can't smoke the cheese anymore. And the best time to smoke it is in the winter when it's super cold outside. It makes the best smoky cheese. So I'll be putting that on my pizza along with this mozzarella. It's a lot of mozzarella. If I have too much, I could put it in the freezer and save it for my next pizza. Or I can put it um, in my lasagna. Sometimes I make homemade manicotti, and that recipe I got from my daughter's great-grandma. I'm telling you, I follow recipes, but then I make up my own. So I found the recipe that she, I had gotten from her like 20 years ago, and um, probably 22 years ago now. And I was looking, and I was like, oh no, I don't put this in it anymore, and I don't do this anymore. But you know what? When you have certain ingredients and you don't have certain ingredients, you can make things just the way you want to. When I was learning how to cook, it was from my surrogate mommy, is what I called her, because she taught me a lot of stuff. Um, she taught me how to cook, and I asked her one time what her recipes are. She's I don't have recipes, honey. I just make what I like, and if it smells good, I put it in there. So sometimes... You know, things come out interesting and you don't know what what it's going to taste like. And you can never recreate it because it's always different. So I'm going to grate some other cheese here and show you my other ingredients that I'm going to put on the pizza. I'll see you guys in a bit.
little bit of butter in my pan with some vegetable oil. My husband cut my chicken up into, look at that, little itty bitty strips. There's no way I can cut them that little. So I'm going to salt and pepper and just season it just a little bit because we're going to add some of that good barbecue sauce to it when it's done. So you don't want to add just butter to your chicken because it would brown your chicken too fast. That's why you add a little bit of oil to it. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. I like my Lowry seasoning salt. And we're going to add some garlic powder to it. I'm not measuring because I don't measure. I just kind of coat, coat things just a little bit. And some onion powder. These are staples in my house along with Mrs. Dash. I've got a big thing of Mrs. Dash, so I sh got it's got different seasonings in it, and some of the seasonings are really, really big, so all the powdery stuff sinks to the bottom. So I'm gonna shake it up really good. Get some of that seasoning all mixed up. Add it, not a lot, because you don't, it's lemony. You don't want it to overpower. My husband is so awesome in the kitchen. He does most of my chopping and cutting for me. He gets the vegetables, the smallest cut and the thinnest slices of chicken. And even when we make homemade french fries, oven, I do oven baked french fries, oh my gosh, they're amazing. And there's no way I can cut the fries the same as he does. Oops, I turned on the stove light, there we go. Focus, okay. I'm gonna brown this up, and once it is all browned up, we will add the barbecue sauce to it. So we'll be back here in a little bit. Okay, so it got just a little bit of liquid in it and I drained it off so that it can start browning. It's still a little pink right there. I'm also making the bacon. And if you don't know how to make bacon, then I don't know what to say. There was actually a meme that said, then you are un-American. Because all Americans know how to make bacon. It was on the back of a bacon package. Mmm, it's browning up nicely. My bacon is almost crispy. You don't want soggy bacon on your pizza. I don't like crispy, crispy bacon. I like kind of medium bacon. I, I do like my bacon cooked, of course, but it can't be crispy if I'm gonna eat it. But if you're gonna put it in stuff like um, stuffed pork chops or uh, things that are gonna soften up like stroganoff, I'll show you how to make my homemade stroganoff one day. Um, you're gonna want crispy bacon, not soft bacon. Because once you put it in liquid, it kind of softens up a little bit. Okay, that is browned up pretty nicely. I'm going to add some barbecue sauce to it now. My homemade barbecue sauce. Not a whole lot because it's going to be on the um, pizza crust. Mm, that smells so good. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. So it doesn't, it's going to splatter all over my stove. Darn it. See, I'm a mess. The secret to that is cleaning it up right after so it doesn't stick to the stove. You know, barbecue sauces and tomato sauces and stuff. If you don't clean them up right away, they're hard to get off. Oh, there goes my sous chef. 
And when the stove is warm, that is the best time to clean it up. Mmm, okay, look at that. That is my barbecue chicken for my pizza. You can also use barbecue chicken in the summer if you barbecue and you have extra chicken. Just chop that up and put that right on your pizza. You can use all kinds of already cooked chicken. I've used canned chicken too. Okay, let's find some more ingredients to put on that pizza. See you in a little bit. I'm going to use a round pan for my son's pizza, kind of like a deep dish pizza, and some butter, a little bit too much, but that's okay. Whoops. He doesn't like the cornmeal on his pizza like I do on my crust. So I make his separate. So that's his pizza. I've already kind of greased up my pan. I'm going to put a little bit of cornmeal around it. The recipe actually says like a tablespoon of cornmeal. I just kind of sprinkle it around. My crust is proof in the oven. So I stuck it in the refrigerator for a couple hours. I started at one o'clock, it is now 3.30 ish. And it has risen halfway in the refrigerator. So I only put it in for a half an hour to rise and it actually doubled in size. It's still a little sticky. You punch it, isn't that cool? Sinks down. And since my son is gonna have some, I'm gonna slide this over. Cause I am not gonna use this whole, it's a little sticky still. I should have maybe have put in just a little bit more, but since we're not going to use all of that dough, some of it's going to go for my son. I try to make a little crusty. He he he's not a huge crust fan. <laughs> like when like I said, when he was a baby, he he ate the crust part and stuff. He likes the crust, and he actually likes my crust pizza crust now. So he'll eat it all. But he used to not eat the crust before. So that's my son's pizza crust. This is the pan that I made the jalapeno cheese breads on, which turned out so good. I took some to work for my boss and he made sandwiches out of it. He loved it. He wants me to make more bread for him. So is your boss and your son and your dad, your husband? So I've never been able to like throw the dough up in the air, but I try to make it as round as I can before I put it on here because once I get it on the cornmeal, I don't want it to move it around. My sister worked at a pizza place and I wish I knew how to make the crust like they did. I'm sure I make it good, but once you work at a pizza place, you know how to make really good crust. I 
I always twirl it around. This one's going to get barbecue sauce. And my son is going to get pizza um, sauce, you know, uh, the red sauce. I don't know what you would call it. But I could make homemade pizza sauce. But because it's such a small little pizza, I waste it. So I don't make a homemade. I kind of cheat a little bit. And I'll show you guys what I do. Oops. I'll show you what I do when I make his red sauce. In my family, we don't like um, a lot of red sauce. I always say easy red sauce because it always upsets my stomach. I don't know what it is in, in um, pizza sauce that makes my tummy get upset. But ever since I started doing easy red sauce, it doesn't upset my stomach. And my son is funny because he used to go to friends' houses and spend the night and... Of course, you know, pizza parties and birthdays and stuff, it's always pizza. He never liked the pizza because he always said it just wasn't, it didn't taste good. And I know it's because it had heavy red sauce on it. So I'm going to show you guys my barbecue sauce, my red sauce that I put on the pizza crust over here, and all the ingredients that I put on, I need to preheat the oven to 400 and I can't remember. I'm going to have to get back to you on that. It's so funny. I'll be back in a sec. My oven is preheating right now. I'm going to start with the sauces on each pizza. I said I don't buy pizza sauce. I don't make my own pizza sauce unless I'm going to do both pizzas. So what I do is, my son loves ketchup. I just squirt some ketchup on his pizza. I add a little bit of Italian seasoning to it, like that. And... That is my homemade pizza sauce for my son. Sometimes I make bagel pizzas in the oven and do the same thing. Little biscuit pizzas. That's fast and easy. So that is my son's pizza sauce. Mine, I'm going to do my homemade barbecue sauce. I made that the other day in the video. I will pin that to the comments below so you guys can watch that if you didn't get to see it. I'm gonna go all the way to the edge but not over the crust. And I actually like to sometimes go over my crust but I'm gonna add my everything bagel seeds to my crust like I did to my jalapeno cheese bread. So you spread this around. I always use the back of a spoon. It's just what I do. It's easier for me. Next thing you're going to do is add your cheese. And I like to mix them. I just didn't put it in a big enough bowl. So we're going to add a little bit of the mozzarella and a little bit of the cheddar. Before I add anything to this, I'm going to add some cayenne pepper to it because my husband wants it a little bit more spicy. I love cayenne pepper. I always put it on afterwards anyway, so. Put some cheddar on there. And this one is going to be pepperoni olives and I found some pineapple slices in my pantry. So my husband chopped those up for me. I like to kind of pat them out 
with a paper towel to dry them up because otherwise it makes the pizza a little wet. So if you've got canned pineapple, it comes in the pineapple juice. You drain it up and you can drink that or use it for something else. This got all stuck together. I put it in the refrigerator and it's stuck together. The moisture, so that's okay. It will spread around when it starts melting in the oven. It gets ooey gooey good. Was wondering what everybody likes on their pizza if they like mushrooms I don't have any mushrooms but that would be really good on this anchovies ew no no anchovies are you adding smoked cheese I'm adding some smoked cheese yummy okay so my son does pepperoni this is I don't always buy this brand um, I put it in the freezer that's why it looks like that it's okay this is the second pizza I've made out of it. Some of the pepperoni slices are really thin. The brand I usually buy, they didn't have. So I thought I'd try this one. It wasn't too bad, but like I said, some of those pieces are really thin. Pepperoni all the way around. That one's thicker. Look at that piece. It's thicker than the rest. And I thought there was two slices there. So we're going to do one there and one in the middle. Olives. He does not like onions, so no onions. And I like to buy whole olives. I don't like the canned pre-sliced olives. They, they taste different to me. I don't like them. So I slice my own olives and he's going to do a little bit of pepper or pineapple. You don't want too many ingredients on your pizza because otherwise it'll just fall apart. Okay. A little bit of cheese on top to glue it together. Not a lot. You don't want it to brown too fast because you want your dough, oops, your dough and stuff to cook. So if you put too much cheese on it, it will brown too fast. Look at that. It got soft and stuck together. We'll just kind of tear it apart and spread it around. Okay, let's move on. The oven's preheated. So I've got my chicken. This is the messy part. I'm going to spread it around evenly. You can put bell peppers on it. You can put all kinds of good stuff on it. I didn't have any bell peppers this time. So yellow, red. I like red. Spread that around evenly. I got my bacon already cut up. I'm going to put my onion on. Bacon. Who doesn't like bacon? Bacon, bacon, bacon. I'm going to do the leftover olives because I like olives. Pineapple. When I make my shish kebabs, I like to put the onion and the pineapple next to each other. Next to the chicken. Flavors the chicken so good. Or beef, whatever you're going to put on your shish kebabs. 
That's why I think pineapple goes good on this. Okay, that looks good. Let's put some cheese on there. We'll put it in the oven. Oh, first I've got some butter melting on the stove top. I oh, know I didn't put it in the microwave this time because the oven's heating. So I use a little itty bitty bowl and I put it on the burner. You know the burner that has the hole in it that allows the air to escape from the oven? That's always hot air, right? So I put that little bowl on. I wish this was grated. It's not going to turn out right. It's going to turn out good, but not like I want it. But I put the butter on that little hole and it melts it. There's my melted butter. I'm going to do our crust because my son doesn't like the seeds. Just kind of butter all the way around. This is will make it crusty and crunchy. And then the seeds have garlic and sun, not sunflowers. We already said that. I had to add sunflowers last time, but it's got poppy seeds sesame seeds, black sesame seeds, garlic, onion, shake it around so it all gets mixed up. We'll sprinkle that on. We'll get some of those seeds from the side. I'm going to add some sunflower seeds to it. I know. Weird, right? No, it's good. It's just crust. It's bread. Let's get these in the oven in about 15 minutes. The crust should be golden brown. It could take just a little bit longer. I'll show you what they look like. Check your pizza, make sure you rotate it. I always rotate my pizza about halfway through. It's almost done. It was getting nice and golden crust on it. We'll see you back here in a second. Deep dish pizza. and barbecue chicken pizza. We're gonna let this sit for just a couple minutes before we cut it. See that golden brown crust? If I didn't have the seeds on it, sometimes I remove it from the pan and let it crisp up below, but I let it stay in for just a couple minutes longer so I know the bottom is crispy and crunchy. I purchased my plates from the Dollar Tree, as you can tell if you shop there, you know where these came from. Look, there's a baby, a mama, and can you tell the difference? A papa plate. So I actually took my pizza off and put it in the oven for about three more minutes because I wanted the bottom golden brown. It wasn't as brown. <laughs> as I wanted it. And then my son's is right there. I'm gonna show you how easy it is. I've got the pot holder on the wrong side. Take it out of the pan. Use 
from the pizza cutter. Get the cheese. That's a pan pizza right there. into four slices. Make sure it comes apart. And that's his pizza. think he was waiting okay so this is my pizza here go. and then turn it Cheese, yum. It actually melted out just fine, didn't it, for little chunks of cheese? See, it shows you sometimes mistakes, and it wasn't a mistake, it was just weird that it clumped back together like that. Turned out just fine. Look at that. Come apart. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, it's kind of that up. Come in dish up these two pieces right here. I'm going to take a bite. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yum. Messy hands, perfect. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Enjoy barbecue chicken pizza or my son's spicy Hawaiian pizza.